Good evening, folks. This is Deb Delapiano, and this is your short take. You know, I had two videos in mind. And just as I thought I had the one uh, I was going to do, I've decided to change my mind. So there will be one now, and then I'll post the other one probably, I don't know, sometime tomorrow. If I get it recorded tonight, then it'll be up in the morning. But we'll see. So I don't know if you've been watching the, the shit show that has evolved uh, as the GOP has taken over the House. Um, they, I just got word that the House has adjourned uh, for the night after a third vote in which Kevin McCarthy could not secure the speakership position. So let's talk about this a little bit, okay? So we have had this, let this be a lesson in, in political expediency for everybody. Let this be a lesson for anyone who actually trusts anybody in the GOP. So Kevin McCarthy, first of all, um, in my humble opinion, was complicit in the whole January 6th thing. You know, he literally went from, on the day of the insurrection, he literally went from, I've had enough of this guy talking about Trump, uh, raving, railing about how, you know, he needed to do something to stop it, to then, boom, turning around and going to Mar-a-Lago and bootlicking for him, okay? And honestly, his bootlicking continued because then he comes back after, after going down there and literally, you know, ceding the party to Donald Trump, even though Donald Trump lost the election. He comes back up to Washington and he's got a bunch of blithering idiots that are now elected officials. And I'm speaking specifically, I can mention a few specifically, Madison Cawthorn, Lauren Bobert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, Jim Jordan. And he bootlicked for all of these people, no matter what they said, no matter how egregious their, their, their uh, statements were, no matter how anti-Semitic they were, um, he he failed to discipline any of them. He also refused to participate in J6, which was probably one of the biggest tactical mistakes he could ever have made, because he could actually have attempted to obstruct that group. Um, and instead, he dug his heels in, refused to participate. And, you know, the J6 committee did a masterful job of unveiling just exactly what went on uh, on January 6, 2021. And in the days and weeks leading up to that. So he is bootleg for all these people. He has protected his people. He has turned the blind eye uh, to all of this stuff, okay? Uh, Madison Cawthorn, who literally was mission, missing in action for his last two months in office because he lost in the midterms, he just decided he was done. So as he collected everybody's uh, taxpayer money and put it in his pocket because he got paid his salary, he basically closed up his office, left all his constituents hanging, and moved down to Florida. And, you know, Kevin McCarthy, nary a word, not a word about any of that. So, you know, he has just about done everything he can to be politically expedient so that he could secure the speakership because he wants that very badly. So now what do we have? Now we have, out of nowhere, suddenly... Marjorie Taylor Greene is a Kevin McCarthy person. And that's by and large because Donald Trump, um, you know, backed Kevin McCarthy for the speakership position. So whatever Trump does, Marjorie Taylor Greene's doing because she really truly believes she's going to be his vice presidential nominee. I personally think it's Carrie Lake uh, if he goes that far, but I personally think he's going to be charged before then. That. That's just my opinion, but I can't see it being any other way. So, we have now Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Bobea, and Matt Gates are feuding, okay? It's Marjorie Taylor Greene against the world. She's the only one that's on, in Kevin McCarthy's bailiwick, and that's largely because of Donald Trump, who she bootlicks for. This is honestly like watching a bunch of fascist babies throwing their own shit against the wall. This is what watching the GOP is like, and this is this should be an indicator for everybody out there particularly for the people who voted on party line to put these people back in office. This is going to be what they're going to do for the next two years. They are not going to govern 
in good faith. They are not going to defend the, the Constitution, and they are not going to do a thing for the American people. They're going to waste your money on investigations which will bear no fruit. And I can't see how this conglomeration of radical right-wing freaking lunatics can even conduct an investigation because I don't think any of them are capable of conducting one. I think they're all a freaking joke. So I think it is only fitting that Kevin McCarthy, who I would call a fascist, is now being roundly rejected by the people that he completely covered for, you know, babied, kept, you know, on their committees, refusing to do anything about, you know, disciplining them. I think it's only fitting that he is being rejected by them because he is simply not radical enough. And that is the key here. He is not radical enough. Now, I just have to say that all of this should make me happy because at the end of the day, it could be Hakeem Jeffries, a Democrat, who is the Speaker of the House. If they don't, if they fail to, you know, elect the Speaker from the Republican Party. Now, we know when they leave here tonight, um, they're going to all, you know, try to work little deals with each other. That's how this whole game works in politics. It is. It's, it works this way. This is, look at all of politics is a game of give and take. You want to get something, one side wants something else. This is the way it's played. Anybody who is rational and understands that the people who are in government represent 337 million people, all with diverse needs. There is not, we are not a, a singular nation, okay? There's always give and take. They're going to try to work some backdoor deals here. Um I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. They're going to go back and they're going to vote again. And Kevin McCarthy may very well end up being the Speaker of the House at the end of the day. And then he's going to have to grapple with those who are unhappy with that. Matt Gates, Lauren Bobert, um, Jim Jordan, all of the really radical seditionists. And I, I have to say, it wouldn't matter to me which Republican they put in for Speaker because I consider the next two years already doomed. There is not one Republican in office right now. Let's forget Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, they're gone, okay? There's not one Republican in office right now um, who is any better than another. So, you know, the American people lose no matter who becomes Speaker of the House. But this shit show is guaranteed to go through tomorrow. Uh, I don't know how many votes they'll take tomorrow. You know, when you look back in history, Dave told me tonight that um, at one point way back in the way back machine, it took nine votes to get a speaker. But this is the first time in a hundred years that we are where we are here. This is a joke. OK. You can't govern unless you have a speaker. Everybody is basically up in the air until they elect a speaker of the House. And this should be a lesson to the American people. This is what you can expect from the Republican Party. If you think this party is any more uh, a party that's remotely legitimate, you're sadly mistaken. And there is no way that this party is going to fix itself from within. Would I like to see this party completely implode and fall to pieces? Nothing would make me happier. I think they're a bunch of traitors, seditionists, and liars. And they're not going to serve the public. Let me just tell you the very first thing that they did today. They took down the metal detectors in uh, Congress. So what does that mean? That means everybody there that's not a MAGA Republican is just a little less safe today. That's where we are. I'll keep you guys posted on what happens further. But uh, I will be back tomorrow. I do have another important video for something we need to talk about. And uh, I will see you all again later. Have a nice night.